And good afternoon. Welcome to Cool Springs. Today is Wednesday, August the 23rd, 2023. And after three weeks in a row of forgetting it, the camera operator actually called me on the telephone today to remind me, bring the flying fish. This is our God conversation. Flying fish is the title. Uh, flying fish is really just a toy. This is the famous flying fish. Uh, this is from the vacation Bible school program that we used out of the chapel in 2007. So this particular toy is 16 years old, older than Joshua sitting here next to me. The, the VBS program that year was called Galilee by the Sea. And the whole theme of that vacation Bible school was Jesus calling his disciples to come and follow him and doing a lot of his public ministry around the Sea of Galilee. And group publishing, which is the the company that we were using that did this program for many, many years has done something that's very, very useful. The crafts that they do with their Sunday school curriculum, their VBS curriculum, their uh, fall festivals and Easter and Christmas programs are types of things that kids would actually want to play with. When I was a kid, I can remember the crafts we would make would be things like uh, bird cages made out of popsicle sticks. No bird ever lived in such a cage. You know, it was something to do to kill some time, but it wasn't very practical. Group got the bright idea that whatever toys they put with their ministry programs for children should be things that kids would actually want to play with over and over, and that as they were playing with these wonderful toys, their teachers, their parents, whoever is working with them can use those life things that they enjoy to teach them some things about God. Uh, in just a few minutes, we're going to go over a passage of scripture about the age of accountability. And we're going to talk out of Deuteronomy chapters four through six, where God is specifically laying responsibility on the parents for seeing to it that their kids are raised in the faith. And so let me let me take the toy briefly from you, Joshua, and I promise I'll hand it right back because he's probably going to be dying to use this. This was the, the VBS uh, prop. It's about probably about four inches because it's like roughly my hand length and I have a small adult hand. It's styrofoam. It's, it's like an inch thick block of styrofoam. And what it came with in the kit was a little canister. I need to borrow the canister back little canister that looks looks kind of like um, if you have earplugs that you use for for loud instruments might come in something like this or those of us who are really old like me and remember the days of actual film before you had digital everything this would be a canister that would that would be maybe about an inch and a half to uh, to hold film in it's just a little plastic container and it's got a lid that it's going to take me more time because I don't have very long nails. But the lid comes off, and what you do is the, the kit came with just the styrofoam and the plastic. And so we let the kids use markers to draw their own fish onto the styrofoam. And we would have them put this inside. But while we were doing that, we would take the lid off, give them half of a tablet of Alka-Seltzer, drop it in there, then pour water until it fills the canister, put the lid back on it, and set it up. Well, what's going on inside the canister is that the Alka-Seltzer is bubbling and fizzing and doing what it's supposed to do. And when the Alka-Seltzer would finish its fizz and actually be all fizzed out, it would pop the lid, and the fish would go flying up like that. Well, the kids sat there in the gym floor at the chapel, and then outside on the concrete, and they carried these things home and they played with them for hours and hours and hours on end. By day three of the VBS that particular year, the uh, I had to go to the commissary, the grocery store, to pick up some other things. And the people at the commissary, which was right across the street from the chapel, knew where I worked and what I did, and they corralled me when I went to the checkout counter. What is going on over there at the chapel? We can't keep Alka-Seltzer on the shelves. And the reason was that there wasn't a sudden need for Alka-Seltzer as a product. 
it was the Alka-Seltzer was necessary for the toy to work. So the flying fish, like I said, is now 16 years of age. Uh, when VBS was over with, I contacted the publisher and we bought out their entire supply. Whatever it was they had left over, we bought them out. They have not reprised it since then. I have, I have actually emailed them a few times and suggested to them, sometime in the future, you need to bring this toy back. Why? Because the kids are playing with it. It was a good rainy day. You can sit on your back porch or your carport and play with this thing for hours. Or it was also a good, if it's too hot to be outside, you could sit with it in a, in a garage or a screened in area and just have loads of fun because it's going to leave a little bit of water on the floor. So you don't want to do it like on a, on a wood floor or on carpet, but it was something that kids would play with over and over with because they enjoyed it. Well, moms and dads, when you're teaching your kids about faith, and it's your responsibility to be the primary religious educators, you can send them to a Sunday school, a midweek children's ministry, a children's church program, but that's only a few hours in the week. The rest of the time, they're in your house, and they're seeing how you're living life. You need to look for ways to share faith with them. And a great way for you to do that is to take whatever toy it is that they already like to play with and find a way to turn that toy into a teaching tool. For example, maybe you have a child that has a G.I. Joe type toy. Well, you can talk to them about uh, G.I. Joe and the modern military, but you could also point out that there are lots of Bible stories about people who had to go to war to defend their home, to defend their nations, and how they had to do the right thing and the equipment that they had. There's all kinds of ways that you just, just naturally, as you are spending time with your child, as you're noticing what's going on in your child's life, as you're at the beach with them on vacation, and you're building the sandcastle, or you're hunting the seashells, or you're dipping in the waves, you can work that into the God stories about Jesus going on the shore and teaching people by the shore of the sea and climbing into a boat and the fishermen casting their nets and not getting a catch until Jesus told them where to put the nets. There's all kinds of ways that you can take the natural experiences of life and turn them into times where you teach about faith. I really, really hope this is the, the last one. I had several. And I've wound up giving away to people with kids over the years. So this is actually my last one. So I really hope one day that either that VBS publisher or somebody else will come up with a product like this because it was just a terrific way to explain faith at home, to have those God conversations. Thanks for watching.